You're listening to The John and Heidi Show. Now, featuring the wit and wisdom of Dan Ferris. Okay, dudes, let's walk this sucker. On Sunny 93.3. It's The John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris. Good day, sir. Hey, good day to you guys. How's everything? A little Friday? It's Friday. Happy I love shiny, Friday. A little shiny John and Heidi small faces. <laughs> yes. Already off to the show. Woo! <laughs> That makes three of us. Uh, this uh, little birthday birthday girl is really quite the something. She's a, she's a poet. She's a, she's a songstress. She's an artist. Oh. She is, ladies and gentlemen, happy birthday to Yoko Ono. Yeah, it, uh, oh, oh yes, eighty nine. <laughs> Yoko's eighty nine. Is she really? Is she really? She doesn't look a day over eighty nine. That's just kind of stunning, really. Because she's eighty nine. Holy cow! John Travolta is sixty eight. Oh, I always thought he seemed pretty cool. Yeah, first came across John as Vinny Barbarino, and welcome oh, back, yeah. Katya. Yeah. Uh, he had the, the, the uh, grease that did really well for him. And uh, this guy gave us, really, without this guy, uh, movies in the 80s just really would have been kind of a kind John of a Hughes? zero. John Hughes. Love, love John Hughes. John Hughes. He was The Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Planes, Trains, Automobiles, 16 Candles, Uncle Buck, Weird Science. The man was brilliant. He really Every was. Every one of brilliant. them just defines the 80s. Yep, absolutely. Had an opportunity to visit with a gentleman who knew John Hughes, and he talked about just what a great guy he was as well. And I just, think that's awesome. He was just awesome. Yeah. Super, just, super talented guy. Did what he did and yeah. He was okay with it. Never, it. never went Hollywood, which was strange. Yeah. And I got a car in my garage because of him. And, uh, he planes, trains, and automobiles yeah, car. Do. <laughs> That's a true story. Uh, yeah, passed away in 2009, which is I remember so that. Way too soon. Yeah, John would have only been uh, 72 today. Mm. He's mm. still around. All right, historically speaking, oh boy, this is a weird little grab bag. It was a 1986, and I remember the first time seeing this. It was so powerful and really kind of creepy. The very first anti-smoking ad appears on network television. Oh. The ad featured actor Ewell Brenner. Okay. Oh, yeah. What was bizarre about it is Ewell had passed away the year before. Okay. He was he was from lung cancer, from, lung cancer oh, from smoking. And he recorded a thing. He recorded an anti-smoking ad before he died. Interesting. <clears throat> to play after he died. Yes. Wow, that's wow. it was creepy. some it was some powerful stuff. Yeah, I bet. Mm. Ah. <sighs> Just a moment of silence here. He was amazing in Magnificent Seven. Oh yeah. Love that movie. And then, of course they did a remake of that with Denzel Washington. They even mentioned him in that uh, one night in Bangkok song. Oh, yeah. You yeah. better. You they better did. was a you big know he's deal. a big deal when they mention him in a song. So 1962, out of the world of politics, Robert F. Kennedy, John's brother, okay. announces that U.S. troops will stay in Vietnam until communism is defeated. Mm. Okay. <laughs> he would be incorrect. <laughs> in 1953, the very first 3D movie ever. Opens on movie screens in uh, in New York. Was it Jaws? No, Buana, and you should you should see it because I know you're a big fan of one of the stars in it too. Uh, Buana Devil. Buana Devil. What is it? Buana Devil, starring Robert Stack. Oh, I do love Robert, Robert Stack. 1953. Oh, 53. Okay. Well, I don't know why I was thinking. I thought you said 83. So huh. new no, 19 yeah. 1953. So. 3D movies were out in 1953. The very first one. It was actually... Yeah, uh, yeah they were walking around those 3D glasses all the time, the future, remember? Yeah. yeah. It was produced yeah. in 1952 and released in 1953. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. I need to get out more often. Yeah, it had to do with uh, like like these giant lions killing people in a mine or something. Oh, I wow. would watch that movie. Uh, check it out. Yeah, the advertising tagline for the movie, Buona Devil, was The Miracle of the Age. A lion in your lap, a lover in your arms. Oh, my. Ooh. So saucy. I think we should watch that tonight. <laughs> yeah, Buona Devil starring, no kidding, Robert Stack. <laughs> nice. You should put that on your absolutely have to, huh. have to see list. So there you go. I know you know. We all know. We just bounce forward here. We're going to do that. It is the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris. The Vegas Travel Center is offering three days and two nights accommodations to Vegas. They'll completely waive the package price. Plus, you get tickets to your choice of activities as well as meals. Jump on this now. Obviously, a deal like this isn't going to last. 
When they're gone, they're gone. So don't miss out. Just call 605-210-5220 and they'll get you set up for a great getaway. Call now for this special radio offer. 605-210-5220. That's 605-210-5220. Time now for a bright spot of news brought to you by Paul's Designer Showroom on Lake Lorraine in Sioux Falls. They can brighten any room with a beautiful light fixture and we are going to brighten your day with something positive right now. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but we talked with these folks like maybe a year and a half ago lasagna love we talked about them i believe in 2020 lasagna love was started at the beginning of the pandemic when the founder of good to mama was looking for a way to help moms in her community she and her toddler started making and delivering meals to families in the neighborhood who were struggling whether that struggle was financial emotional or simply a feeling of being overwhelmed lasagna love has now grown to a national movement with thousands of people all over the place cooking and delivering meals to families in their communities what they do is simple. They feed families, they spread kindness, and they strengthen communities. Their mission not only to help address the incredible rise in food insecurity among families, but also to provide a simple act of love and kindness during a time full of uncertainty and stress. If you'd like to register, you can visit their website, lasagnalove.org. And right now, we're going to play an interview from, I believe, a year and a half ago with some local people who are involved in Lasagna Love. Joining me on the phone right now, I have Lainey and Annabella and Alexander. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. How are you? We are great. Awesome. We're excited to chat with you about this. So we're going to start with Lainey. Lainey, tell me a little bit about Lasagna Love and, and how this whole concept came about. Okay, so Lasagna Love was started by a woman in California uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, she saw her neighbors feeling a little overwhelmed by the pandemic, and she decided to start making them lasagnas, leaving them at their doorstep as something sweet to do. And this act of kindness just spread on to her friends and then it is now nationwide with over 6,000 lasagna mamas and papas cooking lasagnas and feeding over 10,000 families across the nation. I think this is just a fun thing. And Lainey, uh, Annabella and Alexander, are those your kiddos then? That's right. So let's start with Annabella. So Annabella, do you get to help make the lasagna then? Yes, we help make the lasagnas, but our daddy I'm obsessed. That is awesome. And Alexander, do you guys help deliver the lasagna as well? Yeah, we deliver the lasagna. That's awesome. What would you say is the very best part of being a part of Lasagna Love? Uh, I think the best part of Lasagna Love is knowing that the families get something to eat. That is a great answer. Oh, boy, you've done such a good job raising these kiddos. Uh, let's go back to Lainey right now. If there's other people listening thinking, that sounds awesome, I would like to do this as well. Is there room for other people to help out with the Lasagna Love? Uh, so uh, volunteers, as well as families in need, can go directly to the website. It is lasagnalove.org, lasagnalove.org, and it's a really simple sign-up. And once you sign up, we'll, we'll get a lasagna out to you, deliver it to your doorstep. And is there quite a need in Sioux Falls? Or are you getting more people signing up saying, I need some assistance, or more people signing up saying, I want to help? Uh, you know, both, both. Both is good. And again, the website is lasagnalove.org. So if you would like to get involved, you can do that. Now, you said it started in California. How in the world did it make its way here to Sioux Falls where you and your family are helping do this? Well, I was watching uh, the Today Show, and Rhiannon Men, the founder of Lasagna Love, was doing a segment. And I thought, this is a great charity for the kids. They can do it in the safety of our own home. And it was actually on their New Year's resolutions list, which was put on hold, and now we can actually do it. Well, I love the fact that you said, hey, that's something we could do, but it's even better that you followed up and did it. So for other people listening right now, doing the same thing, saying, wow, that's a neat idea. That's something I could do. And if they would like to follow up and actually do this, is it an expensive thing to do? No, no. It's it's um, it's pretty inexpensive. The ingredients are inexpensive. And you can make one lasagna a week, one lasagna a month. You can do four lasagnas a week. It's totally up to you, whatever you uh, have availability in your kitchen. I think it's a really neat idea. And for people listening that want to help and people listening that maybe need help, they go to the same place, lasagnalove.org. That's right. And Lainey and Annabella and Alexander, thank you guys so much for doing what you're doing with Lasagna Love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think this is just a really cool way for people to help one another. And if you listening are saying, boy, I could sure utilize some help like that. Or if you're listening saying, boy, I would love to help somebody, you can go to the same website, lasagnalove.org. Again, lasagnalove.org. 
org. Thank you for listening to our Bright Spot of News, brought to you by Paul's Designer Showroom on Lake Lorraine in Sioux Falls. It's Bernie Carrick, former New York City Police Commissioner. If you own a gun, you need to check out StopBoxUSA.com, the safest solution to keep a firearm in your home and get instant, reliable access to that gun. It's an awesome weapon retention product, especially if you have little kids at home or frequent visitors. Get access to your gun in under a second. StopBox is the safest solution to keep a firearm in your home. Use discount code RADIO to save 10% at StopBoxUSA.com. You need to check out StopBoxUSA.com. And now Stuff Dan Finds Interesting. It is time for Stuff Dan Finds Interesting. Dan, what do you find interesting on this Friday? Well, this particular little segment, I think I find it kind of more fun than than interesting, so it's it's probably both. You know, we are sunny 93 point. Yes. We are, and we primarily hang around in in the 80s and and the 90s. It's what we do. And I just came across this list of the biggest one-hit wonders of the 80s pop and rock era. Okay. And some of these are kind of surprising. It's like, how did this group only ever have one hit? Okay. And some of them, it's like, well, that makes sense. But yeah, I just kind of thought it was kind of fun, kind of interesting. For instance, who can forget, because I'm sure we play it, <clears throat> the uh, Vapors with Turning Japanese. I love oh, yeah. that song. That You know what? It's a fun little spunky little song. But yeah, they never did anything else. No, no. Yeah. Never had another, not in America anyway. So yep. Some of these groups actually have, yeah. had some in legs countries. like in Europe and yep. whatnot. But here, new. No, they had one and they were done. Uh, <clears throat> we talked about... Uh, uh, this group in this song a few weeks back, a Tommy Two Tone with Jenny. Yep. In eight six seven five three zero nine. Yeah. I still laugh when, when you said, uh, now let's do the Roman numerals version. Well, he still <laughs> tours, and it's like, well, it's the shortest concert ever. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tommy is a heck of a nice guy, by the way. But Love then Tommy. some of these one hit wonders, they still making bank farming out that tune for other purposes, commercials mainly, for instance, Modern English with I Melt With You. Love yeah. that song. That song crops up again and again oh, over the past few years. Such a great song. Yeah, it's a good tune. Yeah, it's a one hit wonder. And I love this song. I loved the group, I loved the band name, and I loved the tune. I know what boys like, The Waitresses. The Waitresses. I love that song. Now, we play that. In all fairness, they had a really good Christmas song, too. The waitresses did. So that's not just a one hit wonder. Yeah, it was a one hit wonder. Is John getting in my face? I'm is, sorry. Is I that what just he is, happened? He's challenging I you. just check, Dan. Oh, check. It's, it's fun to just say stuff, isn't it, John? <laughs> 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 well, I'm sure the waitresses had several hits, Dan. <laughs> wow. Your facts don't seem to be too factual. <laughs> and this is interesting. I'll bet you didn't know this because this song was originally a minor hit in 1965. By a group called the Strange Loves. Betty Davis eyes. I want candy. Bow wow wow. Ah. Made it a monster hit in the eighties, and that was it. One and done. Mickey Tony Basil. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Mickey. Yeah. Yeah, and that showed up in the in the greatest cheerleader movie ever called Bring It. Yeah, that's the greatest cheerleader movie. Ever. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> Dan and I you like to watch that. Mm-hmm. Then uh, the Irving Berlin classic done by Taco. Putting on the Ritz. Putting on the Ritz. Yeah. Gotta love it. Again, it's one of those where you know you probably shouldn't like it, but it comes you on do, and you're though. turning it up. Yeah. I do love that song. Yeah. And well, the, every song you've mentioned so far, I love. Yeah, me too. That's yeah, why they just, were hits. One hit, because some of these were such incredible songs, and again, you gotta go, how they only do one? Yeah. Come on, Eileen Hess. For instance, and I will still crank this to 11 every time. Thomas Dolby blinded me with science. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a great one. We got to see him do that. We did. That was pretty live. fun. Live. At 80s in the Sand. And then Nina with 99 yep, Luft Balloons. That was a great I love that song. too. Or the English version, Red Balloons. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Which was, but if you saw the uh, video released in Germany, uh-huh. uh, she had some pretty hairy armpits. Oh, oh really? I have to check that out. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. YouTube, here I come. <laughs> Nina was not grooming. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. And from Flashdance Maniac, Michael Cimbello. Yeah. Okay. One hit wonder. Uh, Too Shy by probably the worst group Country. name Country ever, Google. ever in the history yeah. of the uh, What do you want to call uh, the band? <laughs> Everybody oh down Kaja with Kaja Goo Goo? Yeah, let's see that. Yeah. You know, he was a one hit wonder twice with two different bands. I what was the other band? That. Lamal. Never Ending Story. Yeah, same guy. Kaja oh. Goo Goo and Lamal. Both terrible names, by the way. <laughs> and I'm going to end with two of my favorite one-hit wonders from the 80s. Loved both these songs. Uh, Tim Buck 3 with Future Soul Bright Gotta Wear Shades. Oh, yeah, that's a great tune. Really clever tune. 
And this one, I just, you would think it would get old after all these years. But again, here's one where I will just crank it up and love it by Boys Don't Cry, I Want to Be a Cowboy. Oh, I yeah, love that it's too. a great one. Just a strange tune, but it, yeah. just, it just gets you. Yeah, so it does. Every Come time. on, Eileen is not on that list. It was, and I left it off because I absolutely hate that song. Oh, wow. I cannot, I cannot deal with that song. I'm going to find that song. I just, I, it's just one of those tunes that has always aggravated me. No, it was on the list, and I simply well, didn't mention about, it. What um, about Tracy Morgan with, uh, with uh, just Friend? You mean Bismarcky Mark? Bismarcky Tracy Mark. Morgan. That's what you said when you first started. Yeah, here. you always did. You said, Tracy Is that Morgan? Tracy Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> Bismarcky sounds like Tracy Morgan. I think Maybe. Tracy sounds like Bismarcky. I love Bismarcky, but he was a one hit wonder as well. Wow, what a day. We've digressed. Dan, was, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, it was kind of fun, wasn't it? I think it so. It was fun. All right. It's the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you in part by the all new Radio Travel Group.com. At BetterCreditCards.com, our mission is to help you get a better credit card. Why pay more interest than you need to? We have cards with amazing points and perks. If you're not a point person and just want the lowest interest rate, you can find those too at BetterCreditCards.com. You can also find credit cards designed to help you build your credit. BetterCreditCards.com wants to help you get a better credit card. Give yourself a little credit at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Here's your Market Beat Minute for Friday, February 18th, 2022. Equities reversed course again Thursday as geopolitical tensions came back to a simmer. The crisis in Ukraine is at the heart of events and could boil over at any time. Conflicting reports have each side shooting at the other, and nothing is confirmed. The takeaway for the market is that the crisis is not going away and it will likely impact market action over the next week, if not longer. In economic news, jobless claims rose more than expected and counter to seasonal expectations, while on the housing front, permits and starts were a mixed bag showing the impact of high demand and tight supply. Friday's market action will likely be driven by the index of leading indicators, which is expected to show cooling from the previous month. The S&P 500 is down about 8.3% from its all-time high and within striking distance of setting a new low. If the index falls below 4,300, it could easily shed another 500 points within days. You can get the inside track at marketbeatminute.com.